Good morning and welcome to today's verse. Today's verse comes to us from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14 and 15, and I will read it. It says, For the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Here we have the Apostle Paul explaining the very reason why he is compelled to minister, why he is compelled or why he continues to hold fast in ministry. Paul is driven uh, to minister not simply because of the great teachings of Christ or the great example that he saw in Christ or the great ministry of Christ as much as he is compelled to continue to press on and to persevere because it is the love of Christ. For the love of Christ is the very foundation of our salvation and the reason why we minister. We see three things about the love of Christ uh, here in our text. First of all, that Christ, he died for all persons, that all persons might die in him. One died for all, therefore all have died. That is to say that Jesus Christ died for all men, therefore all men have died died. In him, all men have died. That all men were represented in Christ when he died, and all men are counted as having died in Christ. That Jesus Christ lived the perfect life. He lived the ideal life. He lived as the ideal man, and he died the ideal death, a death that stands for all men. Now, that is not to say that this word all is teaching universal salvation, that everyone you will be saved. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter what you believe. It doesn't matter how you live. Everybody is going to be saved. That is not what this is teaching. So this the passage has to be kept uh, in its proper context in connection with the rest of the scripture when it says, therefore, all. Therefore, it means that all that have put their trust, their confidence in the death and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, believing that Christ died for them. And therefore, what God does with that, he takes that person's belief in Christ's death and he counts it as if that person has died in Christ. Therefore, you will not have to pay the penalty for sin for that, that penalty has been satisfied on the cross and God credits the death of Christ to you that believe so that you never have to pay for the penalty of your sin, which is death. That is eternal separation from God in a real place called hell. Secondly, that Christ died that we might live for him. You know, by nature, we're self-centered and self-absorbed. We only, we live to satisfy and to gratify our flesh, our fleshly desires, uh, to seek fame and fortune and possessions and all of that. And none of that stuff would ever satisfy us anyway. But because of the love of Christ, we now live for him. And thirdly, uh, Christ died that we, that we might serve others. And the greatest act of our service is that we would share the testimony of the gospel, that we would declare the gospel to the world, and that we would, we would demonstrate the love of Christ in how we treat one another. And I pray that this verse would be a verse of great uh, encouragement to you as you go throughout your day. And that we remember that as Christ has died for us, then let us live for him. To God be the glory for the great things he has done. I pray that you would meditate upon these verses, that they would be a word of encouragement to you today. And they'd be a word of conviction. They would be a word of application as you go throughout your day. I pray that you would have a safe day. And then tune in again tomorrow, yes, as we consider today's verse.